Can I help you? Can I help you? Oh, I set one little thing down on the counter and both of them. Both of them come running. <laughs> Toby, you trying to trip me and kill me, Toby? It's okay. We love them no matter what. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff, your tropical plant party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. Fan. Fantastic. I, there's a lot I need to get done. A lot of little things. I've talked about this window over and over again. I think that's the first thing I need to tackle because we need to do a terrarium update. Last year I did the whole terrarium Tuesday thing and made a whole bunch of the apothecary jars, which we'll be seeing here in a few minutes. And I never really finished that series off. And uh, I've decided that I'm not going to do terrarium Tuesday again this year. I would like to, it's just, it just, it doesn't make sense. I have to go around and pick up supplies and do an awful lot for those videos that involves leaving the house. I'll talk more about that in a few minutes. First, I need to handle all this and get this Christmas stuff put away. Put away the holiday display. It's officially February. It's time. And it's gotten very, very full to the point where like I can barely reach some of the plants to water them so the Dracaenas back there are looking pretty bad. I'm not that worried about them. They'll be okay. Need to clean like all of these different bells and whatnots and my poor poinsettia back here. Look at, oh, she's so sad. I'm not really shocked by, there's a candy cane in here. When my sister was in town for Christmas before she left, she went around the house and left little candy canes all over the place for me to find and been saving them in there. It's not that unusual. I missed like one watering because it didn't look that thirsty. I, I didn't know. It was being a deceptive poinsettia. Poinsettia, poinsettia. And I came down one morning and it was just, <laughs> just totally wilted on death's door and you know, gave it a little drink and it popped right back up. But it has defoliated, which again, not the end of the world. Just cut it back, probably give it a few weeks and I'll repot it. But this doesn't need to be over here anymore. I'm gonna miss looking at this planter though. I really enjoyed this one. Really sparkly and pretty and so much reflection. I could figure out a way to make one of these that's somehow one I could keep out all year just using like silver balls or googly eyes. That'd be fun and creepy. Not appropriate to keep out the rest of the year. Don't know why my head went there. That would be more of a Halloween thing, wouldn't it? Yeah, anyways, I'm not gonna vlog cleaning out the entire window because that would one probably be pretty boring and it's just, it's a disaster, so. Say goodbye to the Christmas garland and all the little candies and gingerbread houses that we can't even see anymore because they're surrounded by plants. And we'll come back and this will be cleaner. I don't want to like set a bar that's too high. It's probably not gonna look that great, but it'll look better. Morning, pumpkin. Good morning. Did you have fun watching me move things around and get glitter everywhere last night? Okay, bye-bye. Yes, it's the next day. It got too dark and I gave up. But gave up, I mean, got tired. Everything's moved. All the Christmas stuff is out of the window except for this garland, which is going to be very hard to see. But you just saw it. You know what I'm talking about. I remembered that that's something that I really prefer to have somebody else here for. It's because I have to get up on this counter on a big ladder and then I need to hand it down to someone or else it falls over the place. It, like you have to take it apart in sections. It makes it much harder. It doesn't matter. That's not what this video is about. The terrariums. For the majority of these, it has been a full year since they were set up. I started Terrarium Tuesday last year on, I think it was January 17th, and then did that every single Tuesday until early March. There were eight different videos and I built a terrarium in almost all of them. Maybe six out of the eight. I don't know, I don't remember. I really did my best to not mess with these, to not fuss with them, to really not do anything with them. I wanted to keep these to where I was only going to do the bare minimum, just whatever I had to, to keep them alive. I did that because I wanted to see the effectiveness of the terrarium builds and be able to talk about like, how low maintenance they were and all of those things. But because of that, they're also Looking kind of crusty. The objective was to be able to keep them closed and just not have to mess with them. That was the whole point of these apothecary jars was just they would look nice, have some plant life in the kitchen and be low fuss, low maintenance, easy to keep. Oh, and there's another one over here. We'll go through these one by one. As far as the maintenance is concerned, here's what I had to do. There's just one little thing, two little things really. Around August, the basins were pretty dry on them. I popped the lids off and gave them a small drink, just the appropriate amount of water to make sure that the water that's down here in the lower catch level had was about halfway full, something like that. And that's it. 
that's all I've done. They've been watered and then I wiped down the glass a couple of times. I need to do it again because this should be shiny, not dull and mad. It's kind of gross. And that's it. Just one watering and trying to keep the glass clean, which <laughs> I haven't done in a while. I really just didn't want to touch them and mess with them very much. I wanted to keep the lids on these for as long as I possibly could. So I would clean the outside of these and get really frustrated that the inside still looked kind of cruddy because, you know, the water condenses every single day and evaporates off, so they get kind of dirty on the inside too. But I wasn't going to take the tops off to clean the insides because I wanted to see how many times I'd have to remove those lids to water them throughout the course of a year and didn't want to keep taking them on and off every single time I clean the glass. Yeah, look at that. See that? Isn't that kind of gross? It's mostly on the inside. So now that it's been a year, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm kind of on glass cleaner, but I'll see what I can do here. Try and get these cleaned up a little bit more and then can have a closer look at what's going on inside of them. All right, so first up here, this is the first terrarium that was built for Terrarium Tuesday. Better-ish, I ran out of glass cleaner. So I managed to like get one wipe down done on all of them. Was able to get inside of one or two of them and the rest of them still have a little bit of a like a glossiness, or not a glossiness, like a fog on the inside, but that's okay. You get the point, you can see what's going on in here. I'll do my best to keep everything in focus, but shooting through glass is always a bit of a challenge. This terrarium right here is the first one that I put together for Terrarium Tuesday. I, uh, in the first Terrarium Tuesday video, I started to do something like this and then I broke the terrarium, so then, I had to go buy a new one of these apothecary jars and fixed it and got that uploaded the next day. That's when I learned to not pour rocks into really, really, really thin, fragile glass. Should have been common sense. Anyways, the terrarium itself, the plants, they did really well. That's really, I mean, that's gonna be the case for pretty much all of these. Have a Syngonium Super Dwarf Pixie, I believe is what it's called. I put one of these on a lot of the terrariums. I was really into those Syngoniums last year. So they're just fun, cute little ones. There's also a Peperomia down here in the front. Don't remember what it's called. And then a, what is that? A Plumos type asparagus fern in the back. Fern, you know. And then I covered the soil with just moss that I had found out in my garden. So this terrarium did start to develop some mold or fungus, something of some sorts. It's kind of hard to see, but it's in there. It might be easier to see when it's big and on a screen and not tiny on my camera. I don't know. This is the only one that did anything like that. The other terrariums that I did, there was one that got some mold on it. We did a video on that, cleaned it up, and was never an issue again. When it comes to something like this, I could fix this just the way I did in those videos with some peroxide, something like that, or producing some springtails, that would help an awful lot too. But otherwise, it's done well. It hasn't done much growing. None of these have because like I said, they've only been opened once, they've been watered once. That's it. I haven't done any pruning, nothing. Just tried to keep the glass as clean as I could. I would have liked to have seen more growth, at least out of that peperomia down there and the syngonium. The fern really didn't have much space to do anything. This peperomia that's in here has such beautiful, like reddish foliage. Still, it's gonna be hard to see through that glass, but hopefully you can see it there. There are things that can be done to get these growing better. I'll talk a little bit about that when we get through the rest of these. Then the next one, this one was planted up in a, I think this was just a candle jar from like Michael's Crafts, I believe. Again, not a ton of growth. I think I said before, it's probably going to be the case with most of these, but this one out of all of them did probably do the most. But there's a Syngonium in there that's doing well. I mean, not the kind of growth you would expect if it were a potted plant, but still looks pretty good. What's the most impressive is this microsorum. Look at this fern. Hurt me as I accidentally slapped my camera. You can definitely see which direction it was favoring as far as growth goes. So this was the side that was nearest to the window. So that's why it was pushing all of its growth that way. It's been sending up some new runners with some new little fiddleheads popping up on it and it's doing well. There's another fern down here that I cannot remember the name of. Was this that teeny tiny itty bitty baby lemon button fern that was sent to go? Oh, what does not like that angle? Anyways, I believe in one of the videos there was a lemon button fern that I didn't think was a lemon button fern. That might be this one. Have a volunteer clover in there, which I'm fine with. You know, that happens sometimes when you're harvesting your moss from your own yard uh, that will bring other things into the terrariums with them. Sometimes we'll be able to see a good example of that in just a minute here. The moss in this one really didn't do much growing. I just put one little patch in there and expected it to go ahead and fill the rest of it out, but it didn't. It just 
sat there, grew almost aggressively in the other terrariums, but this one, it was like, nah, good right here. Oh, and now my favorites, the Kokedama terrariums, which are barely visible because everything has become horribly backlit. I do not miss having to film through glass. I put these together because I love Kokedama, the moss balls that you put your plants in, but I have always found them to be a pain to keep alive. So much maintenance. So with these, I just wanted to see if I could put them inside these apothecary jars and how that would go. What, if, would they be less maintenance? And they were. Oh my gosh, they were. Even be able to see here how the syngonium that was planted up above on top in this one has started to shoot out some roots from the bottom of that moss ball and they're coming down and attaching into the other one. It looks really, really neat in person. It's kind of hard to tell how it looks through the camera. Hopefully you're able to see that. There have even been some little, I don't know what they are. <laughs> some sort of, I'm guessing, swamp plants. Hello, focus. Some kind of critter plants that are starting to volunteer in here. My guess would be they're probably some sort of like fern spore or something that started to get going. I don't know, but they look cool. Syngoniums, I haven't even really talked about the plants, I've just been talking about the roots and the fake moss that's in there. Syngoniums have been doing really well. These are the super dwarf pixies. They stay really tight, small and compact. They have the most adorable, dainty little leaves on them. This one I thought was having some trouble. This one and another one a couple of months ago, there was a lot of brown discoloration on some of the leaves and then I noticed it was also on the glass. That's when I realized, oh, it's just algae. So I pulled them a little bit further away from the window to reduce the amount of sun exposure. And it looks like that's gone away. I'm not seeing it on any of the leaves on this one. Maybe there'll be a better example to show on the other one. This one though, Nothing. Looking good. Nice and healthy. The cutest leaves. Absolutely love these pixie syngoniums. They're so stinking cute. These were by far the least maintenance of all of them. I didn't have to take them out and soak those moss balls in anything. I just made sure that that one time when I added water to the other ones, I just put a teeny tiny amount of water down here in the bottom to help keep things nice and moist on the inside. And that's all I had to do. Okay, this one right here with the Neanthabella, the parlor palm that's in there. The palm itself, not looking fantastic, but that's kind of to be expected when no nutrient or anything's been given to the plant in a year. I'm a little surprised it's still alive, to be honest. You can see from looking at the foliage, it's not dark green. It could use some nutrients and some help. This was the one that got really moldy. The mold never came back after I did that video. So this one has been opened, but it was like, I don't know, a week or two after filming its original video. I had to pop the top off and take it out to talk about treating the mold. Otherwise, it's the same as the others. It's just been hanging out and chilling in the window. Low maintenance, but it could use some nitrogen. Could definitely use some nitrogen. Oh yeah, there's that algae. I'm trying to show that off a little bit better. This is when they had the algae on. See that brown leaf down there? This one just had way too much moisture in it. It'd be hard to show on camera, but I can vaguely see that the water line in there is about to where the soil is. So this one was way, way, way overwatered. That happens sometimes. The appropriate thing to have done would have been to pay attention and notice that it was overwatered and then to pull that lid off and let it dry out and maybe put some sort of wicking material down here into that soil to help pull that moisture out. But I wanted to keep these as close as possible for a year. So that's what I did. You see all this stringy stuff growing around in here? That is why you make sure to pull out any bits of grass that might be in your moss when you harvest it. I knew it was there. I figured as long as it doesn't start to affect or choke out that syngonium that's in there, it's okay. I was just gonna let it go and let it do its thing. The moss that's in this one got pretty unruly. It is more green in person. It looks pretty brown here through the camera. We wouldn't hurt to go in and clean and tidy that up. I'll more than likely get that grass pulled out of the snout too. I don't see a reason to keep it in there. There is another type of grass that I think would look really pretty in here, but not just like fescue. Does it, I don't need lawn grass growing in here. I know it doesn't look like lawn grass, but apparently that's just what that ends up looking like when you grow it in a terrarium for a year and don't take care of it. This particular syngonium though, I would say did the most growing out of all of them, but that makes sense because look at the amount of soil it has to work with here. The other ones were just in those moss balls. And I doubt I'll be able to find it to show it on camera because it's really, really, really hard to see. You maybe, no, I don't think you're gonna be able to see it. Maybe. The roots, that's all I was gonna say is that the roots from the syngonium are growing all the way down and all the way down to that base. So it's been fairly happy despite having not done much of anything with it. And I don't remember which video I did this one in. 
Do you? I have no idea. In the last terrarium from Terrarium Tuesday, this one, I did a confetti syngonium in here. I'll go ahead and take the lid off. I already have the lids off of the other one, so I was trying to hold some moisture in this one because it really doesn't want to go through the shock of drying very much. This one has a confetti syngonium in it, which has done very little, and it's not very colorful because that's the thing. With something like this, if I were to have given this enough light for this to color up the way I want it to, it would have been too much for the terrarium, so. That's something to think about in the future, right? If Tonia has done very well, hasn't done much, but it's done some growing. You can see it has some dead leaves on it and that's okay. That helps the process. Things can break down in there and release nitrogen and help things grow. This is the Frankie Fetonia, that beautiful pink foliage on it. This one I did open twice last year and that's because I got the mug in the mail from um, Pam's Pretty Plants for Humidity Hose merch. And I thought, I was like, well, this is just, this is the absolute perfect place to put that because it needs to go in with all the humidity hose. And then there's this uh, spigella, I think is what that's called, that spike moss that's planted in the front. One that I usually struggle with, it's one of those plants where you let it dry out just one time, it just dies on you. <laughs> usually you can revive it, but I thought I wanted to see how it would do in a terrarium. And it has done well in it. Not the ideal growth habit out of anything that's in here, I think this would be a good candidate to replant with succulents. I think that would be much more fitting for the shallow nature of this container. But I have gotten really attached to seeing the humidity hose mug in there with the other things around it. So could be fun to just keep it with just the moss and go ahead and prune back the phytonia and then pull this syngonium out, replace it with one that stays smaller and be more fitting for something like this and move this one into a pot where it can grow and live its life the way it needs to because it's clearly not very happy in here. I mean, it's not dying, it's still growing. It just doesn't look like it should. And a lot of these, the plants are stretched and not necessarily looking how I would want them to look if they were a regular house plant. I'm not bothered by that so much in the terrariums. It's not bugging me. I'm not disappointed by that though. Not one bit. They've just been so low maintenance and easy. Like nice living decoration, basically. Because that I haven't really been bothered by some things being stretched out or anything like that. It's sort of fun just to let them go and let them do their thing. And there it is. That's all the terrariums. Well, no, it's not all of them. There is still one that I didn't mention, the Molten Glass Terrarium. That, that one's dead. Had a lot of fun making that terrarium. I still have the actual bowl and the wood that it sits on, but it didn't get watered. That one wasn't one that had a lid on it. And uh, that just, that it died. Cause you know, plants need water. But it's not completely dead. I shouldn't say that. There's still bromeliad and a cryptanthus in there, but the majority of the pilea that was in there that's pretty much all going. I have all the lids to these terrarium soaking in here, or they were. Apparently I need a new stopper because the water just keeps leaking out. They're just sitting down here in some nice soapy water so I can get them nice and sparkly again. And it's been a year. So I think having the lids off for a little while, they might appreciate it. Mostly just these two back here because they have a little bit too much water in there. So I'll probably leave those lids off tonight and let some more evaporate out. The rest of these though, I'll go ahead and get those closed up pretty soon. I did forget to mention this one right here. Look at those runners. Look at that plant. It's been growing, looking so good in there. So this one right here, and I think this one, these two have a couple of isopods in them and a snail or two. There's only one snail in here and I see it every now and then. The isopods, I only see them like once a month. Cause like I said, there's only a couple in there. Getting isopods and springtails put into some of these would help accelerate growth, break things down a lot better as the leaves die. The, you know, they help clean things up. That would get some nitrogen action going on, some nitrogen release. So having the beneficial critters helps facilitate things and get things moving more. Since these are smaller terrariums though, I haven't been concerned about getting them to grow quickly. That wasn't really my objective here. Really that would have been a problem if they were growing very fast, right? Because then I'd have to be doing all kinds of pruning and maintenance on them. And I didn't want that to be the case for these. I just wanted to sit back, look at them and enjoy them. Not that going in and printing one of these up every couple months is a lot of work. It's really not. But as I mentioned, was trying to keep these closed for an entire year. So I only had to open them up that one time. That's pretty good. Especially considering these aren't closed terrariums. They're just apothecary jars and the lids that go on these are pretty loose. So there's a little bit of airflow in there. Not much at all but some. Definitely enough to say that they're not a true closed terrarium and that you couldn't make a vacuum in these. So technically not closed, right? That's probably going a little bit overboard. I don't know if we have to take that definition quite that seriously. I love how much this fern has grown in here. It was doing a lot better in this window than the one that it was in before. So that was one thing. These did get moved just one time before the holidays. I took all of these, moved them over to a different window so that I could set up like holiday things over here. That's when I started to have the algae on the syngonium, the one that's 
over there. That's because the window it got moved to, it was, no, it's just a few feet away. It was slightly different sun exposure. It was a little bit more afternoon sun, whereas this window is mostly morning sun with a little bit of afternoon light. Get a better shot of those roots. Look at those. Isn't that neat? Lighting's a little bit better in some ways and worse in other ways. The, both of these moss ball terrariums, the one with the syngonium and that parlor palm, these I may redo with actual moss or just go in and plug real moss in to those moss balls and let it incorporate itself and grow around those just because that will stay more green. I do think though it probably would be pretty simple to just go through it and plug real moss into those and it would probably take over. I would think it would. Yeah, there it is. There's the update. I might be making some changes here over the next few weeks with them, but nothing dramatic. I won't be adding any uh, beneficial critters into them. I would like to, but one, those do need to be fed. Like it's not necessarily something to set and forget. They do require some care, something to take into account, but it's really, it's mostly just because it is so cold outside. I can't have anything like that shipped. I don't think it would go over well for the isopods and the springtails. It'd be a better thing to focus on probably in the spring or summer, right? As I go through and make changes with these, if I make changes with them, I'll be sure to do videos on that. On that note, like I was saying in the beginning of the video, I'm not going to be doing Terrarium Tuesday like I did in, well, just last year, where I did a video a week for nearly two months. That's partially just because I don't, I don't really need any more terrariums. I would like to get a really big Wardian case, but they're kind of hard to find and extremely expensive. Like they have them out there, but I want like a really, really big, beautiful one. That's always been something I've wanted. Maybe I'll do that someday. I don't know, but not this year because I can't find any or any that are speaking to me, I should say. So if there are any more terrarium videos that come out anytime soon, it's going to be more on improving some things with these, talking about like how to solve some issues that I've had with them. I've had lots of ideas for different terrariums I could build, but like I said, I just, I don't really want any more right now. I just don't want other things that I need to fuss with or take care of or mess with. And a big part of it is acquiring materials. You can order most things online, but I really prefer to pick out my hardscaping materials in person and I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying in my bubble so I can still see my family. So that's why that's not going to work. I have been very happy with all of these. I've enjoyed watching them grow and I have really enjoyed not having to fuss with them. That's the best part of these things. We'll be doing some things to help green up this palm that's in here. I'll talk about that in a different video. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. I wish there was a way to not have this here when I'm trying to film in my garden window. Comment down below. Say hi. Love talking to everybody. What are some fun things y'all been doing? It's that time of year. You've been doing terrariums. That's why I was initially doing this last year. I wanted to garden. I wanted to plant, but I just didn't want to have more big potted house plants everywhere. Just wanted to create something simple. Simple. simple, fun, easy, and an opportunity to play with the plants. I love having this mug in here. I like how the water droplets form on there. It just seems so fitting, doesn't it? Okay, I'm gonna go. Got a lot of other things I need to do. It's supposed to get extremely, extremely cold here and around a lot of the US over the next few days. I gotta get outside and get some more plants moved in and protected. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.